I'm Tom Johnson, Thomas Johnson, Antique Furniture Restoration in Gorm, Maine. This is a nice little top to a, a candle stand. I don't have the whole table here, I only have the top. And all I've been asked to do is reproduce this missing piece of molding. From the beginning, I thought this looked like walnut to me, although it was very light. Uh, so I sanded the edge of uh, one, one segment here. And uh, I believe it is walnut, but it's very light. Um, so I'm unsure. But I do have a, a scrap piece of walnut that has a lot of sapwood in it. And so I'm going to uh, try to use this section here uh, that will be lighter. It's just important that the wood be <clears throat> the same or lighter than the surrounding wood. Now the next thing I'm going to do is cut this this rabbit here. So now with the rabbit cut, uh, I think the next thing to do is I got to I got to cut these angles and fit the piece in there. So there's a uh, eight segments to this table. It's an octagon. Uh, so eight into 360 is 45. And so if I held this at the center line here, each one of these angles is half of that, or 22 and a half. I'll just uh, uh, experiment on a piece of scrap, see if that works. Okay, it looks, looks good so far, but I won't know until I cut this side. Yeah, my angles look good. Uh, I need to cut it a little shorter, which is good. I can do that. Okay, the angles look good. I think I can go ahead and cut my piece now. Okay, that looks good. But the question is, is did my did my rabbit come up to the edge? And it hasn't yet, so I need to take off a little bit more. That looks good. My joints are good, and I'm right up against the core wood here. Okay, I think the next thing I need to do is cut this inside shape. Now I'm going to line my edge here. I'm going to put this tape on the top, but I need that line to line up with this here. So I'm going to transfer those marks to the top. I'm a little shy of my uh, line there. Maybe I cut on the wrong side of my line or something. Well, what I got to do is cut back on my rabbit here and I'll probably also then have to cut a little bit off the end just a little bit at a time until it fits. I 
I think I lucked out. It goes right up, right up to the line where I want it, and it's uh, nice and flush here too. I wonder if I could use the same piece of tape. Try to line it up here. Yeah, I think that'll work. Now I'm going to cut this on the bandsaw, uh, but I'm going to cut it at, at least uh, somewhat at this angle. So I'm going to measure this. I think the next step <clears throat> is to glue this where it belongs before I carve it down. And what's odd is I move this right up to the leather here. I'm short. I got a space there. It's kind of like exactly how much I trimmed off of it before. I think I'm going to have to fill that space. And I think I'm going to fill it with a piece of the same wood with the grain going in the same direction. I think I need to try to cut a thinner piece. Alright, I think that's uh, going to do it. Uh, before I glue this on, the next step will be to sand this front edge, make it smooth. So I think I'm ready to glue this down. I've been trying to think if there was anything else I could do before I glue it. I've sanded the outside edge, the inside edge. I think at this point I just glue it down and then I attempt to carve this molding out. Okay, I think before I start working on this, well, I'm gonna trim this veneer. But then I've got to tape off this leather to protect it. Before I tape this off, there is some decorative stenciling on here. Now, I don't know if it's really gold or not. It's supposed to look like gold, but I really want to protect that from the tape. So I'm going to put a little uh, wax on this leather top, taking it up as close to the edge as I can, so that the tape has minimal contact with the leather. Okay, now I'm going to trim that veneer patch a little bit, and then I'm going to use my compass to draw this, the line right here, the inside of this molding, and then I've just got to start removing a lot of wood. Yeah, this is my widest uh, chow and carving tool, but it's not quite right to curve. I think I'll need to cut my line. Um, with a knife at first. Okay, I've scored this uh, as deep as I can right now with this knife. I think I'll remove a bunch of wood as much as I can with a chisel up to that line. So basically I'm just going to keep chiseling this down to my line, chiseling and cutting as I go along until I get it to this level right here, the inside edge of this curved outer molding. Alright, I've got this uh, initial part leveled down to that little ridge. It didn't take long, about 15 minutes. Uh, I think I want to round over the outside edge of this and then I'm going to define that corner between the ledge and this rounded over part.
Okay, I'm satisfied now with this uh, outside rounded over part. Now I've got to use a gouge to cut out this cove. I've been really worried how I was going to mark off the little ledge. Uh, but then I had an idea. Believe it or not, I actually have some 16th inch tape. And I'm going to use that tape along this edge to give me my line in here. And I'll also use that tape on the vertical surface that remains here. It's funny, I'm using the tape to give me a, a visual start to carving. <laughs> the, the tape is so light colored that it, it's not much of a visual. I'm going to see if I can run a sharp pencil on the outside line of that tape. It might help a little bit. Now, luckily I've got a gouge here, because I don't have too many gouges, but this one looks like it's the perfect uh, cove here. I've got one that's a little bit smaller, but it's still a good curve. I'm going to start with the smaller one and then just try to finish up with the one that is perfect. This blade uh, feels sharp, but it wouldn't hurt to sharpen it up a bit. Maybe I'll do this one while I'm at it. This one feels really sharp. Though. Okay, I think I'm uh, ready to start sanding. I'll start with a little bit of 60 grit, and I have a uh, full uh, contour sanding pad that helps me maintain that code. I guess I can pull off my tape now. Okay, I think I've got this sanded pretty well, at least with 100. I'll sand it a little more later. But now I'm going to sand all the rest of the moldings all the way down, all the way around, down to the bare wood to get it ready for finishing. Okay, I've finished sanding this uh, to 150, and now I'm going to stain it. I'm going to brush on a walnut dye stain. Now one of the reasons I use dye stain is because I can go back, you can apply multiple coats of dye stain and make something darker and darker, so I think that my new piece of wood is a little bit lighter than the others, so I can go back and add a little color to it. And I might kind of go over this whole thing adding a little more color here and there, trying to even it out. And now I'll go around the whole perimeter. Uh, putting a little stain on any area that looks a little light to me. Just trying to even it up. Okay, that's good for now. Um, I'm not going to do any more. The next step will be to seal it. And after I seal it, I can do a little more uh, brushing of stain, or I can also use my toners. So last night, off camera, I gave this another coat of sealer. And now I need to uh, sand this, although I'm not going to use sandpaper. Uh, I'm too worried about cutting through down to the bare wood through all these corners. So I'll use a uh, scotch bright pad. Okay, now I'm going to uh, spray a coat of uh, satin lac on the bottom and the top. And then I'll decide later, after it dries, whether I need to do any more uh, toning, and whether or not it needs another. So this is dried really well. Looks really good on the bottom, it feels smooth. But I noticed here in the, in the molding itself, especially on the new piece that I uh, made, it's just a little bit rough. It, I think I need to sand that. I think I need to actually sand it. I'm going to use 500 and then the gray pad, and uh, do the whole edge and spray it again. All right, I've let this dry overnight. 
It's nice and smooth now. It looks great. I'm going to now use uh, go over it with a little steel wool just to make it really nice and smooth. I'm going to use the beeswax polish. Not that it needs polish because I just finished it, but just as a lubricant for the steel wool. Okay, the next step is to remove my uh, plastic and tape. Uh, this first layer of tape isn't touching the leather. Uh, I've got to be very careful when I do that. So I'm going to take a container here with some paint thinner in it and an artist brush. Now, it's this layer of tape that's actually on the leather that I'm most concerned about. If you remember, I did wax it up some to help with removal. And uh, in case I see any any sign of the adhesive pulling up any color or anything, the paint, that's what I'm going to use the paint thinner for to release the tape. As I do this, I'm watching the surface here. I see nothing amiss. And I'm also looking at the tape here to see if I see it pulling up anything. There's a little bit of stain on the edge, but there's no, it's not pulling anything up off the leather. This is pulling up so nicely, uh, I don't think I need the paint thinner. But if I did see it, trying to pull up a little clear finish or color or anything. That's why I would dip the brush in the paint thinner and loosen the tape with the paint thinner. And that would also help prevent <clears throat> any damage. There you have it, a nice little uh, tabletop, uh, new piece of molding. Uh, honestly, I, I'm not even sure which uh, piece it is myself, so it looks pretty good.